I think uh, I'll uh, I'll I'll focus on two aspects of this of this very concept of periodization. One, it's history. After all, uh, everything has a history. Even the notion of periodization has a history. It wasn't there all the time, and probably it will not be there all the time. So it has a, a, a location, a, a temporal location, as it were. It was. It has a. It has a history, as it were. You know. So I like to talk about the history of this notion of periodization, uh, and the second uh, aspect of it I like to talk about is the significance of the meaning of this periodization, meaning of this notion of of uh, what does it mean to us? What how what is the significance of this uh, periodization? So I like to talk mainly about these two aspects. There are several other aspects naturally, but I, I like to concentrate on these two aspects. Now, one history of uh, the notion of periodization. Uh, there was a time when uh, what we call ancient period or medieval period that there was uh, history was written in in various societies and civilizations uh, but there was no period of there was no concept of dividing history into periods any kind of periods you know ancient medieval modern came much later but any other kind of period you know the notion that history can be divided into periods of this that or the other that notion didn't exist anywhere you know uh, one notion one kind of periodization did uh, come about, uh, which has in a way significance for history as well, though it was not directly related to history. And that was the periodization in terms of religions, you know, uh, namely that uh, Christianity, when Christianity came along, came along 2100 years ago, uh, uh, sorry, 22, years ago, uh, not only religion, uh, the true and false religion, and all who do not, uh, who are not faithful to religion, and uh, faithful to the true religion, namely Christianity. So, uh, as I said, it's really religious division, but it also has a historical dimension to it, namely that uh, uh, prior to 20 and to 2021 or 2000 or odd years, uh, there was untruth, falsehood prevailing, and then the, 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 the period of history with, with truth, our true history began, as it were. So it has a historical dimension, though it's not directly related to history. And the second division, similar kind of division, which was related to, to religion, but also has a, has a historical dimension to it, namely with Islam. Islam also has a similar claim. Uh, there were other prophets earlier, uh, various prophets earlier, but Muhammad is the last of our prophets, Khatimul Anbiya last prophet and therefore the earlier uh, religions that prevailed were not the true religion some of them were partly true like christianity but they were not true religions true religions religion begins with uh, islam what they call the period of jahiliyat earlier ignorance or savagery earlier prior to the coming of islam it was a period of savagery or or ignorance ignorance in the sense of uh, uh, in the religious sense, you know, not in the sense of that the people couldn't read or write, uh, but in the religious in the religious sense, in the sense that they, their notion of religion earlier, prior to Islam, was a notion of false religion, just like in Christianity. So that uh, the the uh, and then uh, then Islam brought uh, uh, true knowledge and true. Uh, and uh, and uh, false religions disappeared. So that that's a that's all. It, these are two vertical lines, you know. Christianity before Christianity, after Christianity, before Islam, after Islam. They divide time vertically. You know, uh, uh, 
but these are the only two divisions of uh, time that we know of, uh, which uh, have a significance of history. But you know, uh, uh, otherwise, the notion of time that prevailed in all societies, all civilizations was the notion of uh, the notion of flowing time, uninterrupted time. Time flows from the beginning to the end. Uh, even the beginning and end were uh, conceptualized, uh, creation, the day of creation to the day of judgment, etc., etc. Even these were conceptualized, but time flows from beginning to end without any interruption, you know, except for these two, uh, Christianity and Islam. There were no other, other interruption, interruption of time. It was a flowing notion of time, you know. Uh, now, uh, once the uh, notion of periodization came along, and how did it came, came along, and when did it came, come along? Well, the notion of periodization, uh, let me say that the term modern, as we, as we use it every day, all the time, was used in Europe around 5th century or so AD. Uh, but in the sense of present, you know, modern uh, signified the present as distinct from the past. So modern used was used to distinct distinguish the past from the present. And this this distinction between past and present was present naturally everywhere. You know, uh, every society has a notion of what was happening. In the past, every what's happening now, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But very, very indistinct kind of you know differentiation between past and present. You know, uh, so that uh, the 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 once the 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 notion the once the uh, so that modern was used in in the inherent in it. You know, it was a non-value term. It was a neutral term. It was just to signify. It was a descriptive term just to signify the present as distinct from the past. It had no value. Now I'm emphasizing this value part because that's the most different element in it. The value part period in Europe, uh, when post-Renaissance Europe uh, uh, created a self-image of modernity, What was the modernity uh, of that in that self-image? Modernity was equivalent to rationality. So it thought of itself as a period of rationality when uh, when people started thinking in rational terms rather than in uh, in irrational terms. How does one distinguish the irrational terms and rational terms, or rational mode and irrational mode? That was that was done to to uh, once a self image of rationality was created its other its contrast was also created you know so that the modern period is a period of rationality and therefore the earlier period the pre modern period the medieval period was a period of irrationality it was a period of superstition religion or religiosity they were equated with superstition uh, and in contrast rationality was posited as a contrast to superstition, religion, religiosity, the dark ages as the term was, you know, those were the dark ages of irrationality in contrast to the uh, rational age of modernity, the modern rational age. So, uh, it's about uh, towards the end of the 17th century in 60, one, one that, you know, from the, from the religious discourse is sort of, uh, spread out to the non-religious discourse, so the social discourse uh, or, or history as such. And that uh, in, the, in the year 1688, towards the end of the 17th century, this formalization of ancient medieval and modern, that occurred uh, at the hands of a Ger German historian, Celarius, who formalized this uh, Period, period, periodization, period, historic, division of history into ancient, medieval, and modern. So that uh, uh, 
uh, it now uh, inaugurated the era of uh, <clears throat> it, it, it <clears throat> excuse me it sort of eliminated, eliminated the notion of flowing time uninterrupted time and displaced it with the with the notion of period um, sorry time with interruptions not one interruption like in christianity or islam but several interruptions you know certainly these two interruptions ancient interrupted by medieval and medieval interrupted by modern so that uh, the the uh, the uh, term modern came to be equated with came to be loaded with a certain value value of rationality unlike the earlier use of the term modern as descriptive now it is a value loaded term which has a certain value namely the value of of uh, uh, rationality loaded and therefore the rest of the period the other period was a period of irrationality by contrast this period of ir irrationality or dark age world and which by world they meant uh, europe uh, progressed from one stage of development to another stage of development to third stage of development and so on and so forth which was systematized by marx and engels in these several five i think five stages of development from primitive society to slavery to feudalism to uh, capitalism etc etc each one is a stage of development and therefore each is a a firm break in the history of uh, in 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 terms of time uh, in history therefore stages of de de development uh, modified that uh, grand notion of to to some extent modified that grand notion of division of time historical time in terms of ancient medieval and modern and each stage of development was uh, as it were self contained was cohesive uh, was cogent cohesive unit of time each stage of development had a had given attributes uh, capitalism is a stage with you know industry and freedom and democracy and individualism and so on and of course rationality reason science technology medieval is the is the or feudal or medieval is the stage of uh, irrationality no development very little development no technology etc etc basically irrational and so on the earlier one of course was a, was constructed as a, an earlier period of period of rationality which was recovered by renaissance so that uh, each each break therefore is a con self contained uh, complete in itself uh, with given attributes now uh, in all this all that i have described so far uh, there are two as two uh, facets which have to be noted one is that this was a creation in europe this was a european creation it had a strong uh, spatial location namely europe located in space and it was located in time what was the time the time was starting from 17th century onwards to to uh, to the present day present day if you like uh, the uh, the binary that was created was uh, was binary on 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 these lines of modernity versus uh, rationality versus irrationality uh, and and uh, and uh, uh, you know given periods of time for, to this uh, characterized by one or the other and so on so that a there is a special specific space for when this notion was created namely europe particularly western europe and a specific period of time when it was created namely 17th century onwards uh starting with 16th century but 17th century onwards so, uh so history now got divided into two two or three very distinct periods uh ancient medieval and modern uh, with uh, again not vertical division but horizontal division several horizontal divisions of time now once it began there once it originated there this uh, division of time historical time it uh, or, or this binary or this uh, 
rational versus irrational, this binary. This was then universalized, you know, uh, uh, with the expansion of Europe into the rest of the world, with the expansion, uh, not only uh, technologically and technological and military and uh, political expansion and territorial expansion, but also expansion of the concepts of Europe. The Europe, European concepts also got universalized. They were also adopted uh, everywhere, either adopted or forced uh, down uh, or one, one way or the other. Uh, they were uh, universalized. The whole Europe, whole of the world, whole of the universe uh, uh, operated with these this uh, ancient, medieval and modern, this historical division of time, this periodization. Now, uh, you, we have uh, of this rationality versus irrationality. This was universalized in terms of, we are quite familiar with that, in terms of the rational West and the spiritual East, you know. Uh, and and uh, in India, it came in the form of, uh, in, a, in a very dis different form, uh, not the rational and the uh, and the spiritual, but in the form of a, a, a Hindu period, Muslim period, and British period, which uh, James Mill had given. So basic assumption remains the same. The West had become modern and rational from the 17th century onwards and progressive from the 17th century onwards. The rest of the world was uh, backward and uh, either spiritual and therefore irrational or backward or whatever, you know. So that, uh, and India, of course, uh, the backwardness was equated with the uh, 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 Muslim period. You know? So the Muslim period was a period of backwardness and regression and so on and so forth. You know? uh, in doing this, uh, the, the notion of periodization uh, robbed the rest of the world with their existing notions. You know. The whole world had different societies, different civilizations, had their own notions of history. And history means space and time. History is, uh, uh, deals with, these are the two essential ingredients of history, space and time. When we are talking of medieval space, medieval is time and India is space. Modern world, uh, space and time in history all the time. And every society has its notion of space and time, different notion of space, space and time. And therefore, uh, this this uh, uh, devised in Europe from the 17th century onwards, uh, suppressed or as, as Jack Goody called, Jack Goody has a beautiful book called The Theft of History, how the different notions of history around the world were stolen by this one notion. And this one notion was superimposed on all the other existing notions of time and history and so on and so forth. This was the theft of history from the rest of the world and one single notion of history originating in Europe, developed in Europe, relevant to Europe, was superimposed on the rest of the world. You know? Therefore, what follows from this is the fact that the modern world that we inhabit is a world which is a gift to us from the 17th or if you like 18th century onwards. You know? uh, it's entirely a creation of the West, uh, post-Renaissance West. It's a, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a gift to the rest of the world and the rest of the world must copy this gift, must follow in the footstep of, of this uh, modernity that Europe has given us. You know? uh, and this was the, this was the sort of, uh, this was a sort of prevalent notion everywhere, you know, uh, in Europe, that is to say, uh, prevalent notion that West, whether it is Montesquieu or it is Hegel or it is Karl Marx, or in our times, uh, whether it is uh, Bailey or uh, Chris Bailey or Eisenstadt, Eisenstadt, the great soci sociological thinker of Israel, or Fernand Braudel, the great uh, historian of France, whether the, the fundamental assumption there is, the premise there is, uh, there is that the modern world is the creation of Europe and the rest of the world, either through 
colonialization or through imitation like Japan. Uh, one way or the other, the modern world uh, that we inhabit is the creation of Europe and the rest of the world has had to imitate, emulate that or follow that or whatever, you know. Therefore, the, the, the two points, uh, one that it was a, uh, uh, its location was Europe, its origin was Europe, and its lo location had a temporal bracket, namely 17th century onwards. So Europe uh, in the, from the 17th century onwards gave us this notion of periodization of time. You know. Now, uh, let me say here that periodization of time is essentially a, naturally a, a, a cons concept. It's a conceptual construct. It's not an objective reality. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a concept which has been evolved uh, at a certain point of time. And therefore, by its very nature, it has to be a transient concept. Every, every concept is a transient concept. It's, it comes along at a certain time or period of time in certain circumstances, then it gives way to other concepts and so on. As it is uh, the notion of, uh, the notion of uh, uh, modern, for example, or for that matter, medieval, late medieval, early medieval, or medi and medieval. So early medieval, medieval, and late medieval. Early modern, modern, and even postmodern now. So that uh, all of these got slightly modified, each in, in their turn, late antiquity, early antiquity, and so on. Each of this got modified. The very fact that this was modification uh, came along uh, and is coming along is a, is, a, is a pointer to the transient nature of this concept of historical division of time or this periodization. Uh, now, let me come to the second point, uh, second aspect of it. Uh, which follows from this. Is the modern world really uh, spatially and temporally limited? Is the world that we inhabit today, modern world that we inhabit today, is it really given to us by Europe in the 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th century, or is, is, does it have a wider spread, both spatially and temporally? I would uh, suggest it's neither. It's neither limited temporally nor uh, spatially. It's, it has a much wider spread. Let, let me say uh, uh, that it is now getting recognized that the world that we inhabit today, uh, the world that we inhabit today has been created not by one particular province or state or region uh, like Europe and in not one particular period of time, 17th, 18th century onwards, but every society, every single society, every single uh, civilization has contributed to it somehow, something or the other to, for, to making the world modern as, we, as it is. You know? And this has happened throughout history, not in a particular period of time, uh, 17th century or 18th century or any other century, but it has happened throughout uh, history. So the basic premises of, uh, of periodization that was given to us that I've been discussing, namely that it was a, it was a West European creation especially, and temporarily it was a creation of this period, 17th, 18th century onwards. Both of these are questionable. And I'm questioning them, you know. namely that uh, you uh, you uh, look at anything that that is. Let, let's look at the things of daily use. You know, uh, let me say that the modern world is a very fast-moving world, literally fast-moving world. Not only in terms of uh, you know. Uh, in, in facilities available to us, but in terms of uh, internet and so on and so forth, but literally moves very fast, you know, when you go out on the street, uh, look at the number of cars that are moving or vehicles that are moving at what speed. All of us who have grown up uh, in the last 30, 40 years would have known, would, would be amazed at the speed with which 
people are moving now in their vehicles and so on and so forth. You know, or early in the morning when the milkman comes to deliver the milk, you know, he comes uh, riding a bicycle. Uh, pro- that's old now, probably motorcycle, but nonetheless, some kind of a cycle. You know, so. What is at the base of this modern, very fast moving life, literally fast moving life, is the wheel. Wheel, take away the wheel from our life and see where we'd land up, you know. Uh, so wheel has contributed so much to the modernity of our life, to the modern world that we are living in, hasn't it? You know? When one in the 17th century and 18th century and therefore he began one of this fast moving society or fast moving civilizations began wheel was invented five and a half thousand years ago five and a half thousand bc actually six seven six seven thousand years ago you know uh, eight thousand maybe eight thousand years ago and it was invented in mesopotamia by someone, you know. So since then, look at it, just imagine, you know, the wheel is invented seven, eight thousand years ago, and <clears throat> how much it has contributed to changing the scenario around you, you know, how much that little wheel has changed, and it does so in the 21st century and will do so in the 25th century. How much has that, and so hasn't that Mesopotamian man or woman uh, who invented the wheel in the 6,000, 7,000 years ago, how much he or she has contributed to making the world that we, modern world that we live in? Or the crop, the, the food that we eat every day, every day meal, what are the ingredients in that meal, you know? What are the origin of the ingredients of that meal? Even a little uh, thing like potato and tomato and chilies, for example, in our meal, which are which will part of every meal. These none of these is local. None of these is Indian. They have been they have migrated from long, long distances. You know, uh, from South America, uh, they have migrated uh, in the 16th century to India, but elsewhere earlier and later. So the, the 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 dress that we wear, you know, the cotton uh, dress that we wear now that summer is on, you know, uh, when was the cotton? When was uh, when was uh, cotton in, uh, discovered or invented? And where was it in Europe in the 17th 18th century, uh, or was it elsewhere? It probably probably in Egypt uh, or silk in China, and so on and so forth. You know, you can you can go on and on counting uh, every every even every day uh, every day uh, uh, things which make make your life easy every day uh, these are all very very old inventions or discoveries and very different divergent very very different societies different times and different uh, regions they were discovered and they have contributed to the world that we live in the modern world that we live in or uh, uh, or religions, or cultures, or languages, or philosophies, anything that you think of, you know, uh, it's not really the creation of any particular region or particular period of time, but all of these have greatly, uh, greatly, uh, they have, all of these have been, have emerged from different regions of the world, and at different periods of, of time and throughout history they have enriched uh, and if you like modernized or uh, let's say contribute contributed to the modernized quote unquote modernization of life which process continues to this day and will continue to the in the next uh, next next uh, well, not only centuries but millennia and so on so that uh, the 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 uh, the uh, notion that you know rationality was brought to us by uh, by europe it gives you know it's, it's based on the assumption that pre pre modern uh, pre renaissance europe 
was irrational and therefore the rest of the world was irrational they couldn't think they couldn't uh, think rationally they couldn't question uh, and reason uh, and so on absurd i mean reason is part of every society and every civilization reason in some way or the other whether in the sense whether in the in the mode of uh, philosophizing or in the mode of uh, everyday life is full of reason of various kinds you know uh, or in terms of organization of society or in terms of uh, distribution of tasks in society you know so reason and and therefore and reason means questioning uh, reason means questioning why should this remain so you know so these have been part of every single society throughout history so that the the very the very notion that europe gave you the the the, the gave you rationality and modernity in a particular period of time is a very it's a it's a notion which is not only uh, uh based on questionable premises but it's be, being questioned everywhere to be to be fair uh one could of course uh, let me conclude one could of course uh <clears throat> say that you know uh, uh does it really mean that every society every civilization every period that we look every century or millennia it has the same characteristic you know of constantly moving forward and reason and and technology and so on and so forth and new crops and so on no uh, one one could really say that you know in some periods the the and what is that is what characterizes the modernity of the modern period the pace of development is hugely different very very much faster than it was in the previous centuries which is true pace of development is much faster in the 20th century is, is really much faster than it was in the 19th century in the 21st century is much faster than it is the, it was in the 20th century and the pace of development certainly is very very fast but then the very notion of the pace of development itself is not is itself is a historically evolved notion the pace of development in the 20th century was faster than in the 19th century because 19th century has prepared the ground for the pace of development in the 20th century the 20th century has prepared contributed to the ground in which the 21st century pace of development overall development is much faster and so on so far so, so forth you can go back you know so that pace of development also is a historical phenomenon it's a cumulative effect of history it develops because a, a certain base for it has been created by the preceding centuries or period or or whatever you know so that pace of development fast pace of i'm sure the 21st century or 22nd century pace of development will be much much faster than it is in the 21st century you know uh than it is now uh so that pace of development is undoubtedly much faster now but it is because it was uh, it has a it has been built upon a grounding that has been given to us by the preceding uh, period now let me uh, conclude by saying that uh, all i mean i already said that all concepts are transient concepts uh, they are born in a particular context of time uh, and they are they they wither away uh, when the in constant context changes you know so this periodization that we are that we are living with was born as i tried to show in a certain period a certain context certain period of time certain location will how will for example uh, 22nd century or 23rd century look upon the 20th century 19th or 20th century the modern period of our history will it be modern for them will they look upon uh, will they look upon uh, uh, 20th century as we look upon 18th century uh, i'm sorry will they look upon 20th century as a very modern period compare comparable to them or will they look upon 20th century as we look upon the 18th century or 17th century as okay the progress had begun but it was slow and so on and so forth 20th century will look 
certainly very very will look very certainly will look certainly very slow to them you know in terms of development and progress and change and so on and so forth you know so will they call it modern uh, will they continue to call the 20th century or 19th century a period of modern history i am very doubtful very very doubtful will they call it medieval uh, that's even more doubtful or ancient and so on so forth more doubtful what will they do i don't know nobody knows what will the how work how will they call it what will they call it but i think i can guess that the very notion of ancient medieval and modern will probably disappear by then Uh, the very because it's a transient notion again and again emphasizing it's a transient concept every concept is transient concept it arose at a particular time it is getting modified uh, again and again uh, everywhere and it's therefore bound to in another two uh, maybe one century maybe two centuries i one doesn't know it will certainly be replaced by some other category of uh, periodization or if there is any category of periodization then you know so but some other category of historical analysis that much one can be fairly certain of that it will be a repla- it will be a replacement of the whole category of analysis of history uh, from the one that we are so used to ancient medieval and modern thank you very much 